Pigmented lesions of conjunctiva. The pigmented lesions of conjunctiva can be primary lesions when they occur uh, because of the disease process inside the eye or they can be secondary lesions because of the systemic conditions present in the body. The primary lesions are the benign epithelial melanosis, the nevus of ota, primary acquired melanosis, the pigmented nevus and conjunctival melanoma. So now let us uh, talk about all of these in detail. For number one is the term ocular melanosis. The term ocular melanosis is basically used for two conditions. That means the benign conjunctival epithelial melanosis and the primary acquired melanosis together they are referred to as the ocular melanosis. Okay, so this is very important that the term melanosis is used for both of these conditions. Now let us talk about what is meant by the benign conjunctival epithelial melanosis. The benign conjunctival epithelial melanosis is also called the racial melanosis. The reason it is called racial melanosis is that because it is seen in a dark skinned individual. About 95% uh, of the times it is seen in the dark skinned individuals. Okay. Now another important point about this benign conjunctival uh, epithelial melanosis or the racial melanosis is that it is non-cancerous okay so it is present at birth and then it tends to remain stable throughout the life okay it does not increase in the size or does not get more dense with time so here what is the path uh, pathology which is behind the benign conjunctival epithelial melanosis the pathology is basically the increased melanin production. The number of melanocytes are basically normal. So whatever melanocytes are present inside the dermis, they will be present. It's just that the amount of melanin that they are going to produce, that is going to increase in these patients. And an important point to remember over here is that the racial melanosis or the benign conjunctival epithelial melanosis is non-cancerous. Now, if you want to describe the lesions, these lesions are actually seen in both the eyes. So it is bilateral and they are flat. They are not raised and they're usually present uh, surrounding the limbus area. So they are perilimbal. Okay, so bilateral, flat, perilimbal lesions, non-cancerous, associated with dark skin individuals and due to the increased melanin production is benign conjunctival epithelial melanosis. The name itself suggests that these are benign. So just have a look at these pictures. So as you can see the lesions are present in both the eyes and they are these brownish color lesions and they are quite flat and they are uh, bilateral and they are present around the limbus. So this is racial melanosis. Coming to the second uh, type of pigmentation or primary pigmentation is the nevus of ota. The nevus of ota is also called the oculodermal melanocytosis and it is called oculodermal because um, apart from in, uh, involving the eyeball it also involves the skin which is surrounding the eyeball and that is the reason it is called oculodermal melanocytosis. Here what happens is that these lesions are slate grayish in color or sometimes you can describe them as grayish blue in color and they are flat lesions and they are present on the sclera or the episclera of the eyeball. So what happens is that if this is the eye and here we have the white part of the eye which is called the sclera. On top of that we have a covering which is called episclera and on top of that we have the conjunctiva. Now since these lesions are present in the sclera, if you move the conjunctiva on top of the eyeball, the, the lesions will not move okay and this indicates that the lesions are coming from the sclera. This is uh, in a uh, difference from the racial melanosis which is actually happening within the conjunctiva itself. So the racial melanosis lesions will actually move with the conjunctiva. However, the nevus of ota will not move. Now, what is the pathophysiology? The pathophysiology is that normally the melanocytes, they will actually come from the neural crest cells and now they have to go to the dermis and they will be present in the basal layer of the epidermis first and some of them will be present in the dermis. So if this is the skin, as we know skin has various layers, the most innermost layer of the epidermis will be actually having the 
uh, melanocytes. However, sometimes this migration of the melanocytes will fail and the melanocytes will get trapped in the upper third layer of the uh, of the dermis and you know somewhere here and because of that trapment of this in the upper third layer of the dermis uh, it will lead to a grayish blue macular hyperpigmentation of the conjunctiva and sclera and along with that whichever eye is involved over that area only the skin also will get involved okay so this is occurring unilaterally does not involve both the sides so remember that the cells have failed to migrate towards its basal layer and they are present in the dermis so as i was telling you the cells should be present in this track Basal. That means the melanocytes should be present somewhere here, but they do not uh, migrate to this area and they get trapped within the dermis area. And because of being trapped in the dermis area, they will uh, be uh, this pigmentation that you see. So in this picture, you can see this pigmentation, okay, which is present around the facial skin. This is a grayish bluish color pigmentation. Now, very important point about Nevus of Ota is that it is precancerous okay so there is a risk of melanoma and apart from that one more disease which they are prone to developing is glaucoma so melanoma and glaucoma they are the risk uh, diseases which can occur in a patient with nevus of ota now what is meant by primary acquired melanosis as the name suggests it is acquired that means it is seen in elderly patients may maybe because of the excessive uv light uh, exposure or sunlight exposure so these melanocytes will be present in a heterogeneous colored patch okay so they will not be very uniform they'll be present like this and this the onset will be later in the life and they can also change their shape they can increase their density and therefore they are precancerous and therefore primary acquired melanosis will require the treatment the fifth type is the conjunctival nevus the conjunctival nevus will be a localized lesion unlike the primary acquired melanosis which is more flatter and it is a diffuser lesion the nevus is more of a localized lesion and it is usually present unilaterally sometimes it is elevated sometimes it is flat it is also sometimes cystic as you can see the cyst formations within this nevi and for most of the time they are precancerous so therefore they need treatment the nevus can be present in different locations and they can have different presentations as well they can be cystic they can be blackish sometimes they might not have any pigment at all like this and such a nevus is called a, a melanotic nevus in which there is no melanin present the nevus can also be present in the carincular area as you can see this is a carincular nevus or it can be present in the plica semilunaris uh, so that is the location of the nevus or it can be in the limbal area or a perinimbal area on the conjunctiva. The last but not the least is the conjunctival melanoma. The conjunctival melanoma is already a cancerous condition and usually it will be nodular and it is quite fixed to the globe if you try to move it there will be no movement of this lesion at all and excessive amount of vascularity to that lesion will be seen because it is cancerous and we know malignant cells have high metabolic rates so lots of vessels and vascularization will be present near to this conjunctival melanoma and sometimes a feeding vessel which is called a sentinel vessel also will be seen along with that the patient is going to have enlarged lymph nodes so this could be the preauricular lymph nodes or submental lymph nodes okay which can be present in the patient so preauricular postauricular that is with the, behind the eye uh, behind the ear and sometimes near the chin which is called submandibular and submental lymph nodes those can get enlarged okay in conjunctival melanoma so this is a cancerous condition this definitely needs treatment both chemotherapy and sometimes even surgical treatment coming to the secondary pigmentation and what are the causes of secondary pigmentation secondary pigmentation is seen in adhesions disease okay uh, then it is seen in alcaptonuria in which there is a deposition of the homogentisic acid in the eye and various other organs it can be seen secondary to the radiation or chronic inflammation or irritation of the eyeball now the two important systemic conditions that you have to remember is the adhesions and alcaptonuria so that's all for today. Thank you and have a nice day.